Hello everyone! So if you haven't heard, multiplayer released. And with it, came a ton of new content. So I've decided to try and make a video to inform you on as much of the important information as possible in one simple video. Now obviously I can't cover exactly everything I can because there's actually a lot of stuff added but I've done my best to give you all the stuff you need to know. During my past few live streams, I've gotten a ton of questions and I did my best to answer all those questions. So yes, multiplayer is out, it is in its beta form, it is PC only, some of the mods do still work. My CJB item spawner and cheats menu still work, so does the tractor mod. But you gotta be sure if you're gonna use the mods to install the right mods. Most of the mods have a beta form right now to match the beta multiplayer. So here it is, as much of the content as I could cover in one video about multiplayer. Hope you guys enjoy. Oh, and whatever I missed, whatever you guys have found, let me know in the comments below. I'll try and pin all the good comments, that way we have all the extra information right there. Like I said, there's so much, people are still finding it, just having a lot of fun playing this. Alright, so the way multiplayer works is you can start a new farm, purely multiplayer, or you can add three players to any existing farm. You can add up to three players to any existing farm. If you just want to start a new farm, simply go to co-op. Then depending on how you guys are doing it, you can use invite codes to invite each other. I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Uh, the land game is obviously local area network, or you can host a game. Now I can add people to any of the games where I already have cabins in place. However, in the files where I don't have cabins, it's very simple to add them in. Say I want to add three players to Lumpy Farm with old Gerard here, well, let's do just that. Now the cabins are very cheap and easy to build, just go see Robin. They're considered a farm building. Scroll the appropriate way, right or left will work. Three different cabins to choose from. They're all very easy to build, 100 gold each, and they take different items to build. This one takes 10 stone, this one is 5 wood and 10 fiber, this one takes 10 wood. The only difference between them is their appearance. You can add three of the same one in if you want, but it's not a big deal. Add whatever ones you want. Now if you're going this route, obviously you can add the cabins wherever you want. I don't know why there's snow on the trees, but there's snow on the trees. So you can put them close to your cabin if you want, you can put them in funny places, you can put them against an edge like the bottom, that way they can't get out of their doors. The options are limitless. So when you're done, the cabins would look something like this. Like I said, they might be spread out all over the place, your placement depends on you. You want to take a look inside, they all look the same, they all start out with the same kind of stuff. Now these are all going to have this appearance because I'm on the hilltop farm, they're all mining themed. They all come with parsnips. You can't take the parsnips, the owner of the cabin can. What you can take though, is basically everything else they own. So one thing we figured out right away is you can actually take their TV, you can take their windows, you can take everything and either keep that for yourself or you can actually sell this stuff for pretty good money. So if you guys want to get a jump start and make some easy money right away, take some stuff out of the cabins and just sell it. You can buy nicer stuff later on anyway, just make sure you keep one TV because you need to see that for the weather and luck. Everything else, sell it or steal it for your own, it's kind of fun. Everyone fights trying to steal each other's stuff so you can get the most windows or TVs or tables. Okay, but once the cabins are built, you can't automatically just start playing with friends. You gotta sleep on it, and then you gotta go back to the main menu again. So now that we've effectively saved our game, back to the main menu. Then we can go co-op, and then we have the option to host people on that file. So we'll go to host, we'll go to Lumpy Farm, it's the latest file played on, it's all ready to go. Once we're back on our rainy day, all we gotta do is go into our options menu, then we have the option for server mode, you can go friends only or invite only, accept IP connection. So basically you can go to invite friend, it'll bring up your Steam friends list. Or you can show the invite code. It'll show us something like that. That way people can enter that code into your game. And I guess that's the invite code for this game. So if anyone sees me playing on this file, I guess you have a way in. But that should give you a pretty easy overview of how multiplayer works at its core. One of the first changes I noticed upon leaving my house is Mrs. Wheels came to pay me a visit. Good morning, dear. Did he finally go to see Grandpa in the sky? I would assume so. That's why she's here. It was a lovely walk out here. I haven't seen this old farm in a long time. It's like a hundred feet from her house. I guess she can't get very far because, you know, George can't get very far. It looks even better than I remember. Notice how I have stairs? That's for a reason. Here, I brought you a little something. It's a gift from one gardener to another. Does it look like I'm a gardener? I have zero tended plants on my farm. But this is actually a really cool item they added to the game. It's a garden pot. These pots are really handy. You can use them to grow crops of any season indoors for the drug dealer and all of us. That's why George never held down a job. They also look nice outside, but out here, they can only house in-season crops. And then she gives you the recipe for how to make them. Now these are cool because you can use them outside, and therefore you can use a space on your farm that you can't normally grow on. They obviously, if they're outside, you can only grow the crops that are outdoor in-season. So obviously in winter, I could only do winter seeds in these, but I could place them all over the grass so I can utilize every space of my farm, which is something I will do in the future. But the real benefit to these is you can grow crops indoors. Now there is one new indoor crop, and we need to go see Sandy to get it. That is the cactus. 
can only grow indoors so it's the only indoor crop it should be able to be done in the greenhouse i believe i will try that at some point it takes 12 days to mature produces fruit every three days so if you have a few of these every three days you can make some money we'll see what a single one of these is worth it doesn't look like much this is what a cactus finally looks like to harvest don't forget to water it's actually hard to remember to water because it's inside it gave me a silver quality cactus fruit which you can find in the desert but let's see how much that's worth so that single cactus got me about 100 gold so if you had say 10 of those in your house you just got to water them every day which would be a bit of a chore but you could do it maybe you could have nine set up maybe 18 so you could water them with the right watering can set up and you could make a thousand two thousand gold uh, every three days easy enough it just adds something else to do once you finally make it all the way into winter, you might notice three purple stars on your calendar. Well, that's a new festival. That is the night market. Happens for three days at the beach at night. That's after 5 p.m. Turns out it's the 15th today, so let's go take a look. And multiplayer contains some of the stuff that people were really wondering about ever since the content was announced to be released and it showed images. The purple boat is here. This is where you find the purple boat and all sorts of other wonderful stuff hiding right here. This festival happens again from the 15th to the 18th of winter. The traveling merchant is actually here. Her pig tows her along by inner tube these days. She has the same kind of stuff she normally has. So far, I haven't found anything different. This suspicious guy can simply send you home. That's because of the warp totem. That's a farm warp totem. No big deal. This guy's here. He sells you outdoor decorations. I don't think there's anything bizarre beyond that. Just seasonal plants, which are a nice touch and they themselves are a new addition. And the very best part about the night market, the free coffee. Hello there. Care for a cup of coffee? always. Clint is here too. We don't need to see him because he's boring. Famous painter Lupini. I'm selling this painting for 1200 gold. What do you say? This is just an option to get a painting for 1200 gold. How could you say no? The serpent. Again, just more furniture for your house. Now this little creature that I seem to be Krobus also sells you stuff. We have a gravestone because why not? A stone frog. A cone hat. That's a new hat. Moving down we have an iridium fireplace which is one of the more interesting items we can get. And if we wander along this precarious little boardwalk, we get the mermaid show. Only adults can enter. And there's actually something we can do with this down the road, but I won't spoil that just yet. There's a nice looking mermaid we can sit here and stare at for a while. Very creepy. I haven't quite figured out how to marry her yet, but I will soon. Now, another one of the infamous screenshots that we've been staring at for a while is this place. You probably recognize it. I added it in a few videos. You've probably seen it if you've been searching multiplayer information. Captain. Uh, we can take the deep sea fishing tour for 1,000 gold. We're going down and for once I'm not talking about Marnie. And this gives us an opportunity to catch some new fish. There are three new fish added to the game, all of which are down here. In fact, if you look closely, you see one of them swimming outside the window. The first of which we're going to catch is a spook fish. The huge eyes can detect the faint silhouettes of prey. It's funny, that's the same way that Pam evolved. Next, we have the Midnight Squid, which is a monster we saw outside the window. A strange and mysterious denizen of the ocean's twilight depths. Quite an explanation for such a simple squid. Mysterious fish number three is the blobfish, which is by far the hardest to catch. This odd creature floats above the ocean floor, consuming any edible materials in its path. And aside from that, I'm not sure there is anything else you can do down here at this point, so we're going to go back to the surface. If you look outside though, you can see things pass by as you're moving up and down. I did this bottom mermaid. Unfortunately, I did not manage to capture it in the recording, but I'm sure you guys will see all sorts of strange stuff when you're doing this for your own. That for now about summarizes the night market. I'm going to head home. I am going to come back tomorrow and the next day to see if there's any major changes, but there hasn't been anything that I've found so far. Day number two of the festival. The only thing that I can see has changed has been the traveling merchant has some different stuff. There's a new painting from this guy for the same price. Another 1200 gold well spent. Tropical fish number 173. A personal favorite of mine. This little weirdo seems mostly to be furniture for your house. Stone parrot, suit of armor, a hat and seeds. Oh, by the way, the value of those fish was actually up there pretty good. Ignoring the cucumber because it's a regular fish. The blobfish is worth 781 by itself. There were three of the midnight squids because I caught three of them. And the spookfish. So there's the value in case you were curious. Snowing today in the final day of the festival. No difference aside from the painting and a few different items from the merchants. One of the more interesting things you can do is find a new cutscene from Krobus. You wander to the bus stop. He's for some reason wandering out in the sunlight. He runs away. I would too. He thinks he knows better, but one day I will marry that little monster. He corrupted Mumps, but I'll get him yet. Now, if you'll notice, he ran away. Well, obviously there's some footsteps in the snow because he's not a very smart monster, so obviously he went this way. Now, I wonder where he could have gone. I guess he could cut him some slack because he lives in the sewers, but obviously he couldn't gone any farther than this, so where could he be? Maybe he's in one of these bushes. Oh, here he is. It just says Shadow Guy. He doesn't even get a name. Eep, you caught me. I'm sorry. Take it, take it. It looks so valuable. I couldn't help myself. 
That might mean that it's not actually Krobus. It might just be a weird shadow guy, but I would assume it was because Krobus is the only one you could ever talk to. You received the magnifying glass. You now have the ability to find secret notes. These notes reveal rare and useful information and can be reviewed in your collections tab. So this single item actually adds quite a bit to the game in itself. That cutscene you can trigger in winter as far as I know. I'm not sure about any other seasons. If so, do let me know. And it actually occupies a space in your wallet, the magnifying glass that was empty for an item that was unused in previous versions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's actually going to be it for this one. I have a ton more content recorded. I just couldn't even close to fit it into one video. So I'm going to leave you right here. I'm going to start right now on the next video, though, with the rest of the content that should be out tomorrow. Might do a live stream later. Let me know all the stuff that I haven't found yet in the comments below. Hope you liked it. Thank you all for watching.